Welcome to the Tourism News Wrap. My name is Jason Amo. Coming up, 63rd UNWTO CAF virtual meeting prioritizes sustainable future for tourism. Tunisia unveils COVID-19 protocols to restart tourism. Qatar Airways resumes flight to Tanzania. And Tourism Business Council of South Africa wants international tourism resumed in September. The World Tourism Organization successfully convened its 63rd Regional Commission for Africa meeting virtually on Monday, 8th June 2020, focused on recovery and resilience. Held as the UN Tourism Organization leads the global restart of tourism, 140 participants from 30 countries, including 24 ministers of tourism, representatives of the African Union, the West African Monetary Union and other international organizations. The Secretary General announced a number of initiatives undertaken by the Commission in the last year, including unveiling the UNWTO Inspiring Africa Brand Challenge aimed at marketing and positioning Africa as a destination in the minds of travellers. The Hospitality and Tourism Association of Botswana, HATAB, has urged the government of the country to expedite action on stimulus packages for the sector. The CEO of HATAB, Lili Wakoran, said, quote, of course, tourism has been greatly affected and it is very important that it is provided with the necessary attention and interventions in order for it to bounce back and most importantly, to protect businesses as well as saving jobs, she said. Uganda's Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities has unveiled the new standard operating procedures that will guide the operations of the sector as it begins to restart the sector. The procedures are aimed at ensuring compliance to health, hygiene, safety and sanitation guidelines to prevent the spread of COVID-19, protect employees, guests and suppliers. Together with the ministry, tourism, private sector and local government, the Ugandan Tourism Board will coordinate implementation of the procedures. Together with the ministry, tourism, private sector and local government, the Uganda Tourism Board will coordinate implementation of the procedures. The Ministry of Tourism and Crafts in Tunisia has released a set of health protocols to help restart the tourism sector. The protocols, labelled Ready and Safe, is aimed at ensuring that conditions at the tourism establishments are secured and guarantees the safety of holidaymakers and the general public. It is expected to restore trust and safety for travellers and locals alike. Hotels and resorts will offer fixed menus instead of the popular all-inclusive buffets travellers have grown accustomed to. Tourism accounts for about 14% of Tunisia's GDP. The president of Namibia, Heijin Gob, has called for the liquidation of the country's flag carrier, Air Namibia. According to his remarks, the airline has not been turning a profit and must be liquidated instead of being given additional bailouts. This comes as the airline industry as a whole is facing one of the worst crises in recent history. African aviation expert Nurai Ndawana of Just Africa Aviation has this to say. Fears within the airline are that uh, creditors would use the international flights to attach the aircraft and demand their money. The Tourism Business Council of South Africa has presented its tourism recovery strategy to Parliament's Portfolio Committee on Tourism. The data-driven tourism recovery strategy advocates unequivocally for an earlier phase reopening of international tourism to South Africa as soon as September 2020. CEO of the Council, Chifiwa Chifengwa, said the presentation to the Tourism Portfolio Committee was an important step in the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder collaboration that private and public sector stakeholders had agreed was needed for tourism to reopen and contribute to South Africa's economic and job creation prospects. Uh, for inbound you know, travellers, we then said you know, we need to look at September as the date for opening for the inbound travellers. We also presented the fact that, you know, in opening for the inbound traveler, we don't, we're not doing it in a reckless way. It has to be a phased approach. It has to be done in a way that uh, it's safe. It's in accordance with the protocols that we've put together, of which those protocols are comprehensive, and they deal with how to mitigate the spread of the virus within the tourism uh, sector. So we have done this uh, with those things in mind. So we were able to, to talk to, to to uh, Parliament to say, if we don't open, or if we don't have economic activity within the tourism space, uh, we will lose a whole lot more jobs than what we have lost. A lot more people 
uh, to a region of 600,000 will lose their jobs, uh, directly employed in tourism. And if you look at those that are indirectly employed in tourism, another 600,000. So you're looking at around 1.2 million jobs that could be lost, uh, both direct and indirect. Gulf Carriers, Emirates and Etihad Airways are extending the period of reduced pay for their staff until September as they try to preserve cash during the global coronavirus pandemic. The aviation industry has been among the worst hit by the outbreak, which has dented travel demands and forced major airlines to lay off staff and seek government bailouts. In some cases, pay cuts will also be deepened, with some basic salaries reduced by 25-50% to 50 as the airlines consider all options to protect jobs and preserve cash. Qatar Airways has announced resumption of scheduled flights to the Julius Nyerere International Airport with effect from June 16 after a two-month suspension as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. In a media statement released by the airline, Dar es Salaam will be the airline's first destination in Africa to carry on a scheduled flight. CEO of Qatar Airways, Akbar Al Baker, said, quote, We are excited to resume scheduled flights to Dar es Salaam, one of the largest cities in Africa and a key trade and tourism hub in East Africa. Please join us for the CEO's Town Hall State of the Industry Forum, organized by Africa Travel Association and Voyage Afrique. There's more news on www.voyageafrique.com and all our social media platforms. My name is Jason Amu.